Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today we're going to talk about making tea from the camilla plant. Now what you have to understand that what I've got here is the common camilla, which most people are going to have as a garden plant more for its beauty than anything. Um, it gets the pink flowers. It is the camilla japonica, which is not the one commonly used for making tea. The one that's used commonly for making tea would be the camilla sinensis. And if I'm saying that right, but this can also be used for making tea. And so I've been learning about it and practicing on it and I got some made up the other day. And so I thought I'd take you out here and show you. Now what you want to gather are these young leaves. So obviously you have to do this in the spring or while it's growing, but the more you gather and pinch these off, the more it's going to make through the season. So for a black tea, you're going to take all three of the leaves like that. If you're going to do a green tea, you're just going to pick when you see two leaves like that. Okay, but these can be used for the black. You just want, for green tea, you want really young leaves. Now, I don't have a whole lot of young leaves on this side because I just came out here and harvested a bunch, but there's a lot more up in there and I got to prune all this down anyway. It's getting too tall. Anyway, I'm going to get busy and harvest a bunch that I didn't get already and then hopefully I'll be getting lots more coming in. And when I get a, a nice uh, colander full, I'll take you inside and show you what we do next. Okay, so here I am in the kitchen and I've already started crushing my leaves and I needed to start the section of the video over again. What you need to do with your leaves is you, for making black tea specifically, is you want to lay your leaves out. You can rinse them first if you want. That's totally up to you. And that's that's what I do because I have birds that go in and out of that bush quite a bit. And I don't know what they might be leaving behind. So I like to, to rinse the leaves off. And then you're going to lay them out on a towel and simply let them sit for anywhere from a couple hours to overnight. Uh, overnight is preferable, I found. And if you, this is my third batch I'm working on. And the first batch I did, I let them sit overnight. And this batch right here, they're not dried yet and they're not done. Uh, I let sit for about three hours before I started crushing them. And I found it was easiest to let them sit longer to crush them up. And so here, these ones, I forgot to let these sit and wilt because I was wanting to get busy and get this video made. And so they, they're not crushing up super easy. So it really is best to let them wait, but this is how they should look before you get started. Now I want to show you the difference between a good fresh leaf and then an old leaf. The color is very different. The feel of them is very different. They are, these are very stiff and they're also very brittle. The older leaves. These are not the leaves you want for your tea. You want these fresh young leaves, especially for green or white tea. And now I have yet to make green or white tea. I'm going to be doing that eventually. Now for the green tea, the difference in the process is you're going to, after you rinse them and let them wilt, you're simply going to heat them a little bit and then like in a, maybe in a skillet, in a pan, just kind of basically stir fry them, but in a dry pan or even steam them for a couple of minutes. Just heat them through and then you're going to dehydrate them. Uh, if I remember correctly. I still have to do that. Maybe I'll do a video on that down the road. But for the black tea, it's more involved. The black tea, you actually need to crush the leaves after you've let them sit for a few hours or overnight. You're going to crush them and you're releasing all the moisture from inside the leaves should start coming out. You'll feel that start coming out of the leaves and they'll get damp. And the best way to do it, I like to kind of rip them and tear them like this to start with because I find it easy if I can kind of get them broken up a little bit smaller, especially these since I forgot to let them sit. Uh, anyway, break them up a little bit and then as they get, as they get smaller, then you're going to want to start rolling them just like this. And it can be very, very time consuming depending on how much you're doing because I spent quite a while on this one and on this one over here. And I've only been working on this for a few minutes. 
But anyway, so I'm going to take these fresh leaves and I'm just going to go ahead and tear them up and roll them. What I ended up doing with the with this batch over here is I ended up just sitting down at the table with it and then just spent some time just rolling and rolling and rolling because you want to get it really broken up so that uh, it'll oxidize. So it's kind of like when you cut into an apple or a potato and then you just leave it exposed to the air, they're going to start turning black. And that is where you get black tea because it's oxidized, where your white tea and your green tea are not. So they all come from the same plant. And I don't know yet what the difference is with the oolong tea, but the oolong tea also comes from the same, from the same shrub. And so I still have to learn about that one. Apparently that one is the longest one, the most involved process to make. But anyway, once you get this broken up real small, the way you want it, then you're going to spread it out on your baking dish or whatever it is you have. You just want a nice flat surface. And then you're just going to let that sit, I say, overnight for even another 24 hours. This has already been sitting for 24 hours and it's not it's not quite ready yet. So I'm going to wait until tomorrow to dehydrate this tomorrow morning. And then by when it's all done, it'll look like this. Okay. And then last night I made my first batch of a uh, pot of tea using these leaves or these leaves and it turned out pretty good. I actually like the flavor of it better than the store-bought black tea that that's typically going to be made from the sinensis uh, Camilla. Here's the thing about the Japonicas. Most people, they have this growing already. They most likely have it growing for ornamental purposes and don't realize that this is a, you can use this to make tea. And yes, it is done. It's considered a tea substitute, but really it's pretty much the same thing. Now, from what I was researching, it sounds to me the reason the sinensis is most commonly used is it does have a little bit different flavor. I like the flavor of this better myself and a little bit different aroma. Same thing here. I've never been huge into black tea. It's just not my very my favorite thing. I usually just go for herbal infusions, but I like the aroma and the taste of this much better. And I did make it way too strong last night because I didn't have a clue how much to add to a pot. So you don't need very much. You just, I would say, probably only need about a teaspoon per cup tops. Uh, I'll try that tonight. Uh, I'll try it again and try just putting a teaspoon in a cup with some hot water and see how strong of a tea it makes. But for me, it was a little bit too strong. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is I think the other reason the sinensis is used over the Japonica is that it's much cheaper than the Japonica. I think it puts out a lot more young leaves than this one does and for whatever reason it's just cheaper anyway. But again, coming back to the fact that we're trying to make the most of what we already have on hand. I already have this plant, so I want to make the most of it. So here are some other things and I forgot to get out there and do this when I had the chance. When the, in this pro it's going to be too late most likely for most of you by the time you see this video, but if you've got flowers on your Japonica, on your Camilla, then try picking them and cooking them up and just, you know, use them as a vegetable and see what you think. It, they are actually cooked up and used as a vegetable. And also the seeds of the Japonica are prized for the oil within. So if you can find a way to press the oil out of the seeds, collect the seeds, press the oil out, it's a... Uh, Sometimes it's used as a cooking oil, but again, the sinensis is most likely to be used for cooking oil because it's cheaper than the Japonica, but the Japonica is really prized for its skin and hair benefits, the oil is. And so there's a lot of useful parts on that plant that you're probably just growing because it's beautiful. I mean, this plant has been here since before we bought the house, before we moved in. You know, we got married and moved in here, and that's been over 28 years and I had no idea until this last year that it actually had purposes besides just looking pretty so that gives me another excuse to leave it because I never I really didn't want to pull it out uh, anyway so there's there's just one of the things you can do is start making the most out of those plants that you have and then look into the benefits of the essential oil that comes from the seed it's kind of fascinating when you start learning this stuff now, I want to talk a little bit too about 
Uh, another thing I'm trying as an experiment, and that is right here. I just started this this morning, and for whatever reason, it's still very foamy. This was the tea I made last night from the leaves I had dried up yesterday. And I took the what I didn't drink, I took and put in this jar. I didn't water it down at all. I just added about a quarter cup of sugar. Well, maybe not quite a quarter cup because it's not very full. And then just stirred it up and I'm gonna let it sit and basically turn to vinegar. And I'm curious, because I haven't found any information, I'm sure somebody will share something with me down below, but I couldn't find anything about making a kombucha scoby from scratch that did not involve going to the store and buying more kombucha. And obviously it had to come from somewhere. And I, the most I could come across was a story of some Asian lady, you know, centuries ago, she went to drink some tea and it then got distracted by her kids and then left her teacup sitting outside and forgot about it for weeks on end and then comes across it and finds something slimy growing on top. Well, here's what I do know, is I do know that you can get a SCOBY from making vinegar because I've had many of them form. So why not basically make a black tea vinegar and see if I can get a SCOBY from this? And wouldn't that just be the coolest thing if I could start making kombucha from my own camilla plant? that's been here for a long time, almost three decades. Well, it's probably already has been here for three decades. <laughs> and anyway, and, and see if I can do it from scratch. Cause I haven't, I haven't heard of anyone doing that without running out and buying some from the store and then putting that in as a starter. I think it's gotta be possible. I make vinegar from scratch, not using any kind of starter. Once in a great while, I might put a little bit of vinegar from a previous batch if I just think it might need it, but most of the time I never do that. I just use sugar, water, and whatever herbs and fruits that I'm using, and I can end up with a SCOBY after the fermentation process is done and it's allowed to sit for a while. So I'm thinking it's gotta be possible with this. So we'll see what happens. And I will get back to you down the road, and you know, it, it'll, it'll be a while. <laughs> it'll be at least a month out or so from the time that you see this video right now. And what I'm gonna do is leave it undisturbed. So I don't have anything to strain out of it, so I'm just gonna leave it undisturbed and not worry about it. There's nothing to float up and down and collect mold. And I'm thinking that I can do that. So I'll just put it in the other room next to my vinegars and see what happens. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture right here of what my cup of tea looked like last night. And you can see it was pretty strong. <laughs> It was tasty, but it ended up being way too strong for me. It's a fairly simple process making the black tea, but it can take three days because you have your first day of letting the letting the leaves kind of sit and wilt, and and then you have your third day where you you're crushing them up and then letting them sit again and oxidize, and then you have the next day where when you're going to dehydrate them, and then you're finally ready to use them in tea or whatever else you're gonna do. Oh, I know the other thing I was gonna say. I'm also looking forward to trying to make, using this to make some sun tea very soon. And uh, Mr. Rain, he really likes his iced tea in the summertime. And we had it one of those electric iced tea makers and it, it broke. And so I'm back to doing it the old fashioned way and making sun tea. And so I'm gonna have to get on that next time the sun is out and we'll see how it turns out like that. And I will also get back to you and do an update on that and let you know what I think. And you'll probably see it in an upcoming this and that video. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care and God bless.